good afternoon, everyone. It's a really tough act to follow after uh, after Vikram's and Vanita's presentation, uh, given that these are people that I have literally, you know, grown up watching. Uh, sorry. Ah, all right. That puts more pressure. All right. So this is the triple right there. Okay. You know, typically I would start off by saying that, you know, sorry to stand between you and your lunch. But as it turns out, this is the final presentation of this uh, conference. So I should rather say sorry to stand between you and your weekend. Uh, but let's probably, you know, let's try and make this interesting. I have, I think, about 30 minutes, but uh, I'll probably try and wrap it up much, much earlier. I hope I can get my clipper to... doesn't move. Can someone take a look at this? I think I've seen half my presentation already. Anyway, while this queues up, uh, we can get started. So basically, it's ready? Okay. All right, so I'm sure everyone in this room has a LinkedIn profile. Today we are the largest uh, social media company for professionals. At last count, we had 645 uh, million plus members globally. In India, we have about 60 million plus members. Um, in the last 16 years that LinkedIn has been in existence, basically LinkedIn has transformed itself into a professional, a community of professionals that help each other, a community of professionals that are on LinkedIn not just to find their next play, not just to find opportunities in the marketplace, not just to get hired and to hire, but also to have, you know, discussions about where their industry is heading towards and what's happening in their realm of work. So our mission essentially is to connect the world's professionals to make them more successful, more efficient, more productive in what they do. And how do we do that? There are essentially three ways in which LinkedIn helps to advance your career, right? Stay informed, get the right job, and build meaningful relationships. Now, I've been a power user of LinkedIn even before I joined LinkedIn, which was about two and a half years back. I've been a journalist for about 13 years now, worked across publications, CNBC, the Hindu, VC Circle. So while I was in Hindu, that's when I first discovered the power of LinkedIn because I got a call saying that, hey, we saw your profile and we are looking for someone to drive tech coverage at, at News Corp VC Circle. That's where the conversation started, ended up getting hired, and then from uh, VC Circle, got a call, CNBC was hiring. Uh, again, it was because of my LinkedIn profile, a profile which was complete, a profile which had recommendations, a profile which had uh, you know, listings of all the things that I have done. Uh, I'm sure everyone in this room has had at least one experience of either being hired because someone stumbled upon your profile on LinkedIn, or at least you've had like those one or two conversations. Maybe the hiring never happened, but at least you got discovered on LinkedIn on the, uh, on the basis of your profile. So that's definitely how LinkedIn started off, like to ensure that people get the right job. But beyond that, there are a bunch of other things that we do now. The, the, other, the, the, second part, the, the second piece to this is like we help you build uh, meaningful relationships, really. Like on LinkedIn, uh, just the other day, I was, I was uh, a friend of mine who's also a journalist was sharing this example that he has been interacting with a, a management consultant in Germany for almost 10 years now. 
both of them connected on LinkedIn for the first time. And this person is an outsourcing expert. And over the last 10 years, they have never met in person. They've never had a phone conversation. It's just conversations through LinkedIn. And they've actually formed a very, 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 very strong professional bond. Whenever this person needs like a sound bite of, or, or, or like a quote for any of his stories, he just pings him on LinkedIn. This kind of, uh, you know, this kind of outreach would never have been possible, you know, if you didn't have a professional network, which is today really the largest collective. You know, this is really a platform where professionals converge and the conversations are professional and you end up really building meaningful relationships. And the third piece to this is stay informed. Like, if you have a LinkedIn profile, you know what your connections are doing, you know what's happening in your larger industry, you know what your peers are up to, so that entire information piece is also where the editorial team comes into picture. So that's where not just the editorial team, but also people like you, every person in this room also you know, has a role to play in helping others you know, uh, drive meaningful conversations and in helping others build relationships on LinkedIn. Uh, so the interesting part is like the presentation, uh, I think the, the prelude to the presentation said that uh, this is a talk on LinkedIn for publishers. So I think the assumption would have been, you know, we are talking about the large publishers of the world, but I would actually say that, you know, every person sitting in this room is actually a publisher, right? You have a LinkedIn profile, you have the ability to create content on LinkedIn, and you have the ability of actually talking to professionals, you know, who have similar interests to you. So that brings us to the editorial strategy of LinkedIn. Why does LinkedIn have editors? And by the way, all our editors are journalists. When I joined LinkedIn two and a half years back, a lot of people asked me like, hey, are you quitting journalism? You know, are you getting into PR? Are you getting into Marcoms? But my answer was like, this is a different kind of journalism. This is social journalism. This is conversational journalism. And this is journalism which is super focused on professionals, which is a niche that, you know, a platform like LinkedIn with its 645 million plus members can really, uh, you know, can really expand into. So our editorial mission at LinkedIn is to provide LinkedIn members news and views that they need to talk about things that matter, right? So there are a couple of keywords here, news, you know, which we all know is super, com is super commoditized. Everyone has access to news. Uh, Vikram was talking about, you know, the challenges that you have when, you know, or the filter bubble that you find yourself into when, you know, there's, there's, this, there's this avalanche of news which is thrown at you. But the important part that LinkedIn gives you is not just news, but it is conversations around the news. It is the viewpoint that really matters. Because news, you know, there are like 150 sites that, it, that can really dish out news on a real-time basis. So we provide conversations around the news so that professionals can really talk about things that impacts their industries, that, that impacts their work lives. Um, one of our news products, which I'll talk about in a bit, is the Daily Rundown. It's a, it's, it's a morning uh, digest which is delivered as an in-app notification and as a push notification to people who have opted in. Now, we position the Daily Rundown as a product where, uh, in which, like, you're a busy professional, you know, you have a meeting at 9, 9.30 in the morning, and you just need to get a gist of what happened in the world of work, what happened in the world of news, what are the top five headlines that really determine the news cycle, and you don't have time to, you know, sieve through every publication, so we just give you five news items, and, you know, it's delivered in a consumable, snackable format. And then you can use that information to have conversations both on LinkedIn as well as conversations, you know, at your workplace. All right, so LinkedIn has news editors. Uh, we essentially have 60 plus editors globally. The editorial strategy is, you know, maybe about six years old at LinkedIn. It's also our major differentiator because we have a human plus algo approach. The problem with having just algorithms uh, determining what you should consume in terms of news is a major problem, as you heard in the previous session as well. So we have 60 plus editors, and these are all journalists. These, all of them have had previous lives in you know, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Financial Times, and we are present in, in uh, 12 markets. We publish in English, in, in addition to that, we publish in, in six other languages. 
the India editorial team is about, about uh, you know, three years old. We have six editors in India spread across Bangalore and, uh, and Mumbai. And we also have a state-of-the-art video studio in Bangalore where we get a lot of um, CEOs, CXOs, thought leaders to come and share their perspective. The approach is really, as I mentioned, human plus algo because human editors really need to give that that uh, element of oversight so that the top headlines of the day, like Vikram pointed out, like you may not be interested in the biggest political development of the day, or you may not be interested in the biggest business deal, you may not have signed up for it, but if it's only algo determined, you will not see it on your feed, but you need human editors to then step in and say, you know what, if you don't know about this news and you step into a meeting with your peers, with your colleagues, you may look stupid, right? So you need to have that element of human editorial uh, intervention, really. And we really focus on two things, high quality content and high quality people, right? This, is, this just gives a gist of, uh, you know, the markets where we are present in. We also have like a pan EU product, and that's why you see that in yellow. Uh, we call this the LinkedIn brand of journalism, essentially. This is centered around three pieces. We call it the three C's internally. It's create, curate, and cultivate. Like most people in this room who are from the media news, news media fraternity would, you know, resonate with the, with the create angle. Uh, as I said, we have the daily rundown, which is a morning digest, you know, delivered uh, around 8, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, the entire focus here is that we will give you news in a snackable content. Every news blurb is, 80 to 95 words, we don't want to inundate you with too much information. And as editors and journalists, we know that, you know, the bigger challenge is sometimes how do you compress stuff into fewer words, right? Uh, in addition to those five, five blurbs, we also give you something called as the idea of the day, which is nothing but a piece of nugget or insight that, you know, a LinkedIn professional like yourself would have posted on LinkedIn. And we as editors felt that, you know what, this is a piece of information that other professionals would really benefit from. So we, that, we also add that as uh, an add-on. So the daily rundown, basically, because we have this enhanced distribution through notifications, is one of our strongest products. Um, some, of the, some of the commentary that we have seen on the daily rundown is, is super interesting. You know, members really appreciate the fact, and by the way, LinkedIn users, we like to call them members. Uh, we don't call them subscribers, we call them members because we believe that that creates a, a stronger bond, a stronger connect. So a lot of members have told us that, you know, I wouldn't have discovered this story if I didn't see it in my daily rundown. Because what we try and do is we pick up, you know, the best, uh, the top headlines from different publications and then we give, it, give all of it to you in one place. In addition to that, we do something called as LinkedIn lists. Uh, every, like every year, we have three LinkedIn lists. Uh, there's top startups, there's top voices, um, and there is uh, top companies. Essentially, because we have, you know, we get a, uh, as the world's largest uh, professional media, uh, or the, uh, the world's largest social media company for professionals, we have a read on, you know, what professionals are doing on the platform. So. On the basis of that, we are able to tell you that, hey, these are the top 25 companies in India where employers, where people really want to work at. These are the top 25 startups uh, which are driving a lot of hiring attention. And similarly, we have a top voices list where we uh, highlight 25 professionals who are creating maximum content on LinkedIn. As I said, we also have a uh, studio in Bangalore where we do a lot of shoots. This is the daily rundown. This is how it looks uh, in, on, the, on the LinkedIn app. I think our differentiator is also this piece, which is curate. We believe that there is a lot of news and insights that you know, many publications are putting out there. And our job is to really bring the best of all of these onto LinkedIn. And we also encourage LinkedIn members to actually chime in. Like all of you in this room, you know, have some sort of a play with the media industry in India. Now, if you get up in the morning and you look at a piece of news, say something like, you know, online media companies will now be covered under the FDI law. And if you have a viewpoint on it, 
you know, we'd encourage you to post it on LinkedIn because then we will take that piece of, uh, of content and then we will add it to one of our news products. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but as I said, our USP is not just the news, but the section which, which says editor's picks. We try and ensure that every news has at least three or four conversations, three or four posts that LinkedIn members have shared around that news. And every time your post gets picked up uh, in, in, this, um, in, the, in this section that we have, you will get a notification, like Rajesh Kurup, he's a, he's a business line journalist, he did an article on the BSNL MTNL merger, uh, you know, falling into rough weather. And because we took his post, he got a notification saying that, hey, congratulations, you are an editor's pick. Now in future, you'll also be able to share this with your network. So that really, you know, amplifies your social capital on LinkedIn. This is the today's news and views section. It's the news blurb and below this you will have the, the conversations. The final piece to our three C's is cultivate. And what we do here is essentially uh, bring the collective wisdom of LinkedIn members and we, 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 we tell them that, hey, there's so much of insight that's trapped in your minds. Put it out on LinkedIn. We have influencers who are basically thought leaders in different industries. We give them the influencer badge and their entire uh, motivation to be on LinkedIn is to create content that their followers can engage with, that their, uh, you know, and they can really activate that cohort on LinkedIn. So we have influencers all the way from someone like Richard Branson to, to, to Narendra Modi to Kailash Satyarthi to Oprah Winfrey. Then we have something called campus editors, where the editorial team works with students, because we believe that you know the workplace of the future has to factor in the needs of millennials, right? And a lot of the work-related conversations that are happening presently don't have enough representation from the student community. So campus editors are basically LinkedIn's relays. They are not really our employees. Uh, their entire the, our ask of them is that they go on, you know, they, they create content, they post about things that really affects them as students, uh, and also, you know, talk to, talk to students, talk to other students, and encourage them to post on LinkedIn. And then we have conferences, you know, where we, 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 we cover conferences, we talk about LinkedIn's editorial play at conferences like these. All right, what I just talked about is, you know, what editors do at LinkedIn, but, you know, the gist of the presentation is really why you should publish on LinkedIn, why publishers should leverage LinkedIn, and what is the advantage of really having, uh, you know, your viewpoint showcased on a social media platform like LinkedIn. The biggest advantage that LinkedIn has is that you have real professionals with real identities, right? You can't hide behind you know, you can't hide behind a fake profile. You can probably fake something like, you know, a certification or a course, but you can't fake connections, right? If you've worked with someone, you work with someone. You can't fake the fact that you have worked with someone or not. So to that extent, you know, the professionals, that the people that you have on LinkedIn come with their professional identity. Everything that you do on LinkedIn, you know, you know, is recorded, everything that you do on LinkedIn becomes a part of your professional identity. And people know that, you know, future managers are watching, people know that peers are watching, and if they post anything that's stupid or not in line with what people would expect on a professional network, the network itself does policing, right? Like, people like you and me, you know, if someone posts a, a cat video on LinkedIn, right, a lot of people will say, hey, don't post it here, this is not the place. So the network itself, you know, makes things that are implicit, very explicit, if people post something that is, that is out of bounds. One way to look at it is like posting on LinkedIn or the conversations that happen on LinkedIn is a reflection of the kind of conversations you would have at your workplace, right? Even if you want to criticize someone at your workplace, you will do it in a measured manner. There will be a range in the voice. It won't be, it won't be personal. It won't be something which is very provocative. And because of that, we have seen high quality conversations, like I was talking to Shrikant some time ago, and Shrikant has also seen that when you post content on LinkedIn, the kind of conversations that it generates generally gives you, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something that really helps you 
to talk about things that you know you are concerned about and a lot of journalists tell us that hey when we post something on linkedin just looking at the comments we get our next story idea so which is which is great for them one point that i would like to make is that a lot of our power users tell us that whenever they create content on linkedin there is a tangible business impact so one of the influencers that we work very closely with who who i can't be who i can't name really but he was telling us a couple of months back that every time he posts something on linkedin you know he sees a tangible rise or his team sees a tangible rise in web traffic to all their digital properties right he's a ceo of a company and today you know millennials especially love to work with companies who are shepherded by ceos who have the social capital who take a stance on things and who are out there you know trying to position their brand trying to talk about uh things that professionals would be really interested in spot and attract talent uh what we have seen is people who create content on linkedin are always on the radar of hiring managers hiring managers are tracking people who create content uh just as i said ceos uh, who create content and have a voice are loved similarly hiring managers are always looking out for you know employees who have a perspective like you may have certifications you may have uh, you know amassed a wealth of experience but employer but hiring managers really want to know if you know you are able to bring a wider world view and what is your position on certain things by the way editors are like super hungry for perspectives because we have these two or three news products that i told you about the power of our network is really the the conversations that the network gives us so think about editorial play at linkedin as an avenue for linkedin to really you know explore the media side of things the news side of things right we have the network so we don't really need to worry about you know i don't need really need to get up in the morning and worry about you know who's going to consume my content because we have like 60 million plus members in india and so if you look at what linkedin is trying to do it's like a product company trying to understand the media side of the business whereas a lot of uh, a lot of newsrooms today are approaching it from the other direction right they are trying to understand the product side the tech side the distribution so editors really love perspectives i mean if you see any interesting news and you have a view point on it post it on linkedin i'll tell you the three ways in which you can post on linkedin everyone in this room i believe is a publisher we are just not just talking about you know the institutional publishers but every person who who wants to uh, you know who has a view point should definitely try and uh, you know leverage linkedin for the same so i'll talk a little bit about best practices for publishing on linkedin before that there are three avenues in which you can publish on linkedin uh you have short form updates like status updates which stick to your profile and show up on your mem on your connections feed you have long form articles and then you have videos so for short form post the content really matters uh this needs to be either something which starts a conversation or joins a conversation if there's an existing trending conversation weigh in with your perspective and you will see that this actually helps in the creation of an active community around what you are trying to do on linkedin right the power of linkedin is the community that you build around your professional network some of the things that i have mentioned here like share consistently uh you know if you start being seen as an authority on certain subjects then you will get a lot of incoming requests from people uh in the interest of time i'll just skip the slide and move to uh articles articles also need to be about the news cycle whenever it's about the news cycle there will be a greater interest from both the editors at linkedin as well as you know the general member community to pick it up and comment on it definitely put images have a good headline you know not not clickbaity but catchy catchy really works on linkedin and i just took the opportunity of putting together you know some of the conversation starters that really do well on linkedin things like what will your industry look like in the next 5 to 15 years like people in this room are from the media industry so what are the big changes that are happening on the publisher side of of the business right how do you deal with content which is an animal that needs to be fed every day topics like these and if you are an entrepreneur and you have you know built businesses in the past 
there are a lot of people out there on LinkedIn who are you know looking for actionable advice on how you uh, you know how you managed certain business problems which you know come in the life of any entrepreneur. And finally, videos. Uh, what we encourage people is to publish videos that are between 30 seconds and two minutes. Anything more than that, because we are a mobile-first consumption economy, anything more than that, you know, tends to lose, uh, you know, tends to lose people's attention. Uh, if you are at a conference, like here, you see something interesting, you know, record it, put it up on LinkedIn, let your network know where you are, use a hashtag because then tracking, uh, tracking becomes easy. Try to shoot vertically because a lot of devices don't uh, support horizontal shooting. The experience is not that great. And finally, as I said, you know, we need to ask ourselves some questions before publishing on LinkedIn. The first being, does it belong here? Will it get people talking? If what I'm writing is something which is going to be self-serving, something which will only benefit my business, please don't put it up. Editors won't, you know, sort of feature it. Uh, if I'm putting something which will, uh, which is super promotional, which is super PR-ish, stay away from that. Try to start a conversation, and please don't lift stuff from, uh, you know, from from other publishers. Always have your viewpoint. I think the quality of the conversations are much much higher when people chime in with their perspectives. Finally, I think I have, have like 45 seconds. The interesting. I think this is sort of the, the crux of the presentation. I have published something, what next, right? Uh, if you have an interesting post, if you think that your post is, is great and will add value to LinkedIn members, send us a mail, editors-india at linkedin.com. Make sure it's about something which is in the news so that we can add it to our news products. Uh, also on the daily rundown, when we see commentary, we take some of those and add to our news products. As I said, you will get notified whenever uh, we pick things up. But definitely use this email ID. Our team is always on the lookout for amazing conversations. And yeah, that's it. Time's up. Thank you.